Hello and welcome back to Rez Gaming and welcome back to Tears of the Kingdom. I am back for set 3 of legendary and awesome weapons in this game that can be quite unique and often hard to find or tied to certain unlocks. And as always, these unique weapons have some really important purposes. For example, the bow I'm holding here is the second best bow in the entire game and arguably more reliable to consistently have, so it's got a lot going for it. With that said though, let's begin the video, starting with weapon one. First up, we're going to talk about a iconic weapon, the Sword of the Hero. We're standing down in the depths for a very good reason. The Sword of the Hero is a 17 damage one-handed weapon and is of course an iconic blade. Much better to take this then go alone. As you can see you can also find other pieces of the hero and they are found variously around the depths but what we care about is the weapon of course. Upon acquiring this weapon you can then infinitely get it back again using Poe's at the Poe vendors you find down in the depths. As you can see from the other legendary weapons we've been talking about in this series we can buy them but the sword of the hero is a nice and cheap one only 100 Poe's for this. This could be then a source of a consistent one-handed weapon that you can pull whenever you need to for just Poe's which as you can see I have 357 of them and I haven't actually been trying to collect them for a long time now but let's talk about the sword and where to get it itself fortunately it's also a pretty easy one to get here by this light route you can head southeast to the grove the Dalite grove and within this sort of circle of tree is a chest with the sword in it this is mega easy because you just have to collect it but how do you get here what's the fastest route here especially from the beginning of the game well as you can see the actual location is southwest of Hyrule Field and I would say the nearest crater the nearest entrance is actually this very small one by the shrine just to the west. However, let's say you came from the great abandoned central mine, which is more likely since most of us should have that unlocked. You just head southwest and come around sort of following this bridge across and over and eventually you start entering the grove, which is where you will come across this circle tree stump. As you can see though, it is guarded by a living depths tree, which you can chop and destroy no problem and loot the chest to get the sword. It really is that easy and it's a nice weapon to have, especially when you can now infinitely buy it with pose from here on. Next up, a champion weapon, and one of the best in my opinion in the entire game. This is the second best bow in the game, only behind the highest level of Lionel Bow, the Savage Lionel Bow. This is the Great Eagle Bow, and what's awesome about this is not only the raw damage, but the fact that like the Lionel Bows, it fires three shots in one, meaning you're able to triple your DPS and it only costs one arrow. You saw I went from 181 to 180. Well, when you fuse, the same thing happens. So I'm going to send out not one bomb flower, but three. And I'm actually going to go from 10 bomb flowers to nine. It only costs one to send out three. Same thing with, say, fire fruit or whatever you're going to fuse to this thing. This is an incredibly effective bow for that reason alone. But on top of that, it's got 28 damage, which is firing three times in one. What I believe to be the third best DPS bow in the game is the Mighty Lionel Bow, which has 20 damage. So eight extra damage for three shots more. This is a big DPS increase. The Savage one is 34 damage per shot, though. It's obviously better, but a lot harder to get. This weapon as a champion weapon is something that you can get and then get again whenever you want to recover it using resources. The downside of champion weapons though is that it requires you to have completed that region's storyline. You know, the main story where we go to the four regions. This one is with the Rito village and that region here in Hebra at the top left of the map. And you will need to have completed the wind temple to then have sort of cleansed the area, solved the problem, and then unlock all of the side quests here that you will find in the village. At the top of the village then you can talk to the elder, the chief, the one in charge, of course, Teba, and he will have a side quest for you, the legacy of the Rito. He will craft you the bow, but the problem is he wants one swallow bow, five bundles of wood, and three diamonds. Now a swallow bow is basically just the Rito faction's weapon and while you're in this region you will just find them in chests and drops in general in this region. But there is ways to easily find one, for example a specific chest located right here on the Hebra Peak Mountain. As you can see, it's very close to the tower of this region. So you can take that, fly southwest, landing on this area. And what you will do as you come around here is you will see that there's a couple of icicles. There should be an enemy and there should be a chest. If you defrost the one with the chest, you're gonna get the bow. To do that, you just need to use any source of fire. That could be say using fire flowers, having a torch, ruby weapons, or even just putting like a campfire next to it. Ultimately, just reveal the chest by defrosting the icicle and loot your bow. Next, you're gonna need five bundles of wood, as you can see these are the portable bundles of wood and these are really easy to get you just need to come up to a tree and chop it down once it's chopped down you then finish it off and it turns into a bundle of wood and you can get multiple from bigger trees of course there are loads of trees right here in the village 
cut them down, make the bundles of wood, and you'll easily have five like that. But now it's time to talk about the diamonds, which is the hardest part. So the question is, where are we going to get those three diamonds? Well, because there are two champion weapons in this list, we're actually going to need a six total. So I'll show you six now, so you have options, and I'll show you another three options on the next weapon. Firstly, though, obviously behind me is a vendor that sells three diamonds. Unfortunately, they're pretty expensive. They're a thousand rupees each, and you are able to sell diamonds for 500 rupees. So it's quite the cost on that. But if you're in a dilemma and you just want them immediately, maybe you're willing to do the dupe glitch, then just getting one and using this is probably a good way to do it. If you're willing to use the dupe glitch, then you probably have access to all the diamonds you'll ever need. So there's that. But for those of us not interested in that, let me show you where to get some. So to get three without buying them, I'm going to show you a couple shrines. Firstly, the Yomazuk Shrine, which is southeast from Goran City itself. And as I've marked here with the star, there is the Tarm Point Cave. You come here, you drop down into the cave, use the raft with the NPC, and go to the shrine. Upon entering the shrine, you will immediately be rewarded with the diamond. There's not actually a challenge because you've just done the challenge that was the cave. So that's the first easy diamond there. If I go up to the Sky Islands, right above this is Vala Island, which has this shrine right here, which does also reward a diamond. It is after completion of the skydiving challenge, which is pretty fun, and where you get the skydiving set, which is well worth your time. And this is on the very eastern point of the map, again, right above the other shrine that we just looked at. Thirdly, there's another great shrine very close to here in the Zora Domain entrance, which is this shrine right here, where you enter at the Bone Pond East Cave. It's right here as you begin entering the Zora River. Just as you're growing up, there'll be a huge encampment and hill and you must climb all the way to the top of it with the skull on top of it enter the skull go down into the cave and there it is the shrine is right there and it's another shrine that's just straight up a reward shrine giving you that third diamond but with all your resources you can now go back to teba and tell him and he will straight up just give you it there's no wait time he will immediately give you the bow and you'll be good to go and start using this champion weapon to your leisure again like any champion weapon as he tells you if this breaks or you lose it you can come back get some more resources and have another one made for you pretty awesome to say i believe it's the second best bow in the game Next up then is the Boulder Breaker Greatsword, which is a massive, powerful beast of a weapon that is great for doing what it's supposed to, breaking boulders and rocks, getting whatever ore, and breaking through caves that are blocked up. This champion weapon is a 38 two-handed weapon. You can get weaker versions of this called the Cobble Crushers in this region, but this is sort of the super version, and again, this is unfused at 38 damage, so we can get the damage very high as a blunt weapon. As you might expect, just like the other champion weapons, it requires completion of the region story. So the region story in this case is the one to do with Death Mountain and Goron City itself. Once you've come here, complete that full storyline and complete the Fire Temple, you will restore this region to normalcy and then all of the side quests will appear down below. Towards the top of the town though, you will find the forge where you will find a Goron hitting an anvil. It will actually not be this guy, it'll be this older guy who was the previous guy in charge. Between the two of them though, is the boulder breaker right there. The problem is it's a bit broken, it needs restoring. By talking to Rohan then, he will tell you that he's going to need one cobble crusher, five flint, and three more diamonds to restore it. So just like the other weapons of regions, you will find cobble crushers all over this section of the world. But there is one specific one that's really easy to go grab right now. If you head up high to the bridge that's over the city itself and head southwest, you'll come to the hot springs here. And as you can see that where I've marked, just the west is this broken bridge. And it's actually a monster camp with a chest at the highest point on the bridge itself. By defeating the monsters, or I suppose ignoring them and ascending up, you can get to the chest and loot it. And just like that, you've got yourself a cobble crusher. If for some reason you've looted this one though, again, all you need to do is just loot chests in this region. A great source of this type of stuff will be killing like likes in caves who always drop chests and they'll drop region equipment. In those, you're very likely to find a cobble crusher. Five flint, on the other hand, is another one that's pretty easy to get. It's something you can get from just mining ore in the overworld. And there's tons of that in, say, caves or in the Goron region in general. You can also visit like many inns and check outside. It'll be laying on the ground. But lastly, you're going to need three diamonds. So let's talk about that again. So we're back again for the second champion weapon that once again requires three diamonds. So just like before, you can come here to Goron City and purchase a diamond or three. Each one will cost you 1,000 rupees though, again very expensive, and this is in Goron City, which is just west of Death Mountain, the northeastern point of the whole map. Again, if you're willing to do the dupe glitch, you only need to buy one, and then you can get yourself three very easily. We have a whole guide on the best way to do the dupe glitch on the channel if you're interested. But as an alternative,
alternative all the three shrines where you can get diamonds let's say the tarry town shrine this one's a really easy one there's a vendor here on the west side by the elevator you can buy the crystal from him for 50 rupees after denying it until you get to the 50 rupees cost escort the crystal over the elevator and then make yourself a contraption a boat of some kind to bring the crystal to the shrine upon entering you'll just be given the diamond like the other ones another source of diamonds is going to be bosses in fact you can find some of these giant stone taluses that can be destroyed and drop diamonds this one can even drop two if you're lucky this location is right below kakariko village which is just southeast of central hyrule and there's a crater right here you can enter get the right light route then head northwest and go defeat the boss finally for a third diamond example we have the south hyrule islands here which is actually next to the great sky island there is a shrine right here that you must activate and then it will tell you to where to find the crystal go get the crystal bring it back and that will unlock the shrine and again just a diamond immediately rewarded to you for that the location of this though is just southwest of central hyrule a tower here to the southwest that you could take maybe to get to here or use zonite machines although obviously there's the great sky island which could also be an option to get to it but with your cobble crusher your flint and your diamonds you can now return to rohan and give him the resources that they need with that they'll restore the cobble crusher and you'll be given it as a reward much like the other champion weapons once more if you ever lose it if it breaks you can come back here get some more resources and have them make you another whenever you want this is a great option for a nice ore or wall crusher or just a blunt weapon in general last but not least then it's time for us to talk about this weapon the Dusk Claymore, which is a really, really, really cool weapon, but also comes with a very cool scabbard in itself. The Dusk Claymore is a 32 damage greatsword. So while having a little bit lower damage than, say, a bigger on sword, which has 36 damage, this actually has much more durability, something like 50 durability, which is very impressive for a weapon of this type. And outside of its really cool design and lore, obviously that's going to be useful. To get it, though, there is a minor downside. You're going to need the Sage of Water, the Sage of Lightning, the Sage of Fire, and the Sage of Wind special abilities, meaning your companions, you're going to need their special abilities. And these come from completing all four temples in the game, Lightning, Water, Fire, and of course, our all important wind. These special abilities are how you unveil the secrets of the region I'm standing in. It all begins here at these ruins, at the most northern point of the map, just north of the Korok Forest. Here you'll find a side quest next to the tower with someone standing at this tent at the southeastern point. By talking to him, he'll give you three side quests to do with these monoliths, which you need to interact with to reveal the side quest. By going around to these specific places, you'll need to activate the correct power. So take the water area one, you need to activate the water power, fully charge up like a special attack, and then let that fly. This will raise the platform, revealing a treasure chest. In that treasure chest will actually be a relevant, valuable gemstone, which is very nice. You get three of them, and that's for all of them. But again, this is where they all are on the map for you to refer to. Once you've got all four powers, and you've raised them up and looted all four chests, the final ruin will be revealed and lifted up here at the northeastern point. By heading over to it and just going down, you'll find the last monument and the chest which contains the Dusk Claymore. Then when you interact with the last monolith where you've just got the Dusk Claymore, it will end that also side quest we talked about and you'll get a bunch of rewards including, hey, another diamond. Very useful. But there you have it, our set of legendary weapons for today's episode. I hope you found this useful or interesting. And if you have any other weapon suggestions that could fit into this category of weapon style, then maybe drop it in the comments and maybe we'll talk about it in another video. For now though, I've been Holo, you've been you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye